What's up everyone? Welcome back to Go Kart Build video number 16 and you all just watched me surfing on by or skating on by on the go-kart and that's kind of where it is right now. It's basically a giant skateboard that has no steering capabilities in the front but it rolls really well and it's really solid. Um, I actually just brought it over. Um, I packed it up in the car to bring it somewhere and so that was really cool being able to know that it packs up well in my car so that part of the design is working well. Um, so basically what I've been doing or what I haven't done a whole lot recently but the work that I did do because um, I was waiting on some parts for a while but the work I did do while I was waiting for those parts was um, fix the issues that I had talked about in the previous video which was the front being way too high up than the back. So I basically did a few modifications that I'll show you in a second that lowered the front down. The rear height is about the same, um, but I fixed, uh, sorry, I didn't really fix um, that issue. I kind of just improvised with that. So um, basically I just remounted the C brackets and then uh, got a different sprocket. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that now. Okay, so I got the cart pulled outside here um, just because it's a nice sunny day. So I thought I'd use the natural sunlight to help the video. Okay, so first modification. Um, what I did was this C bracket used to be mounted, and this is a better view, this C bracket used to be mounted right in about the middle. And now I moved it down and re I cut it and then re-welded it uh, on both sides. and kind of had to play around with both sides to make sure they're level um, but I'm really happy I did this because I really feel better about these welds than the previous welds because I'm a lot better at welding now than I was when I originally welded those so those are really solid um, I fixed that slight camber issue so before those brackets were mounted slightly that way so I straightened them out so that fixes that um, but the camber issue also I realized comes with uh, the this bolt here it doesn't sit perfectly snug in the holes for this bracket so I have to get some sort of bushing or something because um, because the bolt has some wiggle room it can the tire can like move out like that and camber out uh, which I don't want but it's not a huge issue if it does um, and then other than that I really haven't done much else um, I smoothed these down so that they're, they're not they don't have the sharp edges and they're flush now so they look a little better um, and I was trying to think what else I did. Um, so I re got a different sprocket. I packaged the old sprocket up in the old sprocket guard and sent it back to the website I got it from. And um, I'm going to go ahead and grab that and then show you guys the difference. Okay, so here is the new sprocket. And it looks pretty much identical to the old one, except this one is a 64 tooth sprocket versus a 69 tooth sprocket. So this is about, I'd say, one and a quarter inch diameter smaller than the old one. So that'll definitely come into play um, when mounting it. And as you can see, I have a lot more room underneath. And the sprocket guard, which is what this gray thing is, it's not a whole lot, doesn't come a whole lot farther out than the the uh, sprocket does oh, sorry because this is the maximum size sprocket that will work for the sprocket guard so sprocket guard really only comes out maybe another quarter inch past the sprocket so I'm definitely gonna have a lot more room worst case scenario if the sprocket guard is um, hitting the ground when I'm driving um, what I'm gonna do is just tighten up the shocks so there won't be as much suspension travel. But I don't think I should have that problem. Oh, um, big thing that I actually forgot that I did, and it was one of the huge steps that I did to um, move along the process here with finishing up the rear axle was I drilled out these axle bolts. And this is a bolt that goes all the way through with a nut on one end. And so I did it on each end of the U-joint on both sides and you can't see it now but I also did it you can kind of see it right there uh, there's a bolt in there as well that locks the hub onto the axle so that um, kind of takes place of having to use a, a key stock and a keyway 
because I built a custom axle so there were no key, keyways for key stock to be put in. And that'll just basically assure that the, uh, the hub and the U-joints don't slip or come off. And of course I'm going to have to get uh, probably a lock washer and some Loctite and just put it on there just to make sure that the vibration doesn't um, rattle these loose because that is not something that I, wa I want happening while I'm driving the cart. So that was a big, big thing that I got done um, on the back here. Uh, I, I just drilled these by hand so I did my best to drill straight through because I used, just used the hand drill and drilled down to the best of my abilities because it was really it would have been really hard to try and get this to be mounted under the drill press and drill that so I just you know did it the best I could um, as you can see from there they're not perfectly straight and it's not a huge issue it kind of makes it a little bit of a pain in the butt when you're taking the bolts in and out because they only like to go in one way um, but other than that they work just fine and I'm really happy that I was able to get that done because that was uh, took a while. <laughs> Each hole took about three minutes, four minutes of just on the drill, constantly, you know, hard pushing down to drill through. Because that's, you know, that's pretty thick steel right there with the U joint and also the the pipe for the axle. So, um, but yeah, so that finishes up all the things that I've done so far on the cart. Um, the next step is. I need to mount the seat and I already my dad kind of helped me we kind of marked with some sharpies um, on where the seat should be mounted and that's what I have to do next and I'll go into that later either in this video or the next video depending on if I get to it today or not um, but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all the different parts that I got because there's some pretty cool parts that I got in alrighty so the first part of the parts box that I got uh, a few weeks ago um, was the clutch now, for those of you who don't know, this is a centrifugal clutch, and basically what this serves a purpose as is the minute you turn that engine on, that shaft is spinning. There's no neutral gear, essentially, because it's just a single drive. Um, so in order to prevent the go-kart from you know, shooting off as soon as I start the engine, that's what this clutch helps with. And this clutch works a lot like a brake drum. And for those that don't know how a brake drum works, basically, Inside the brake drum, or inside this clutch, there's shoes, which are these kind of curved uh, metal pieces that, you know, that have pads on them, and they're attached to springs, and um, centrifugal force, you know, when you swing your arms around, things want to go out this way. So as the RPMs build faster and faster, the, the springs you know, release, and they let the, the shoes kind of expand outwards and then catch this outer uh, shell here. So essentially, um, when the engine starts, the inner part is just spinning, and then once the shoes catch, this outer part will, outer part will start spinning, which has the um, sprocket with the teeth on it that will be attached to the sprocket on the axle. So that was one of the first. That was a uh, one thing that I got in this uh, parts package, and this mounts um, to the sprocket, uh, or not the sprocket, but the um, engine shaft by some key stock and also some set screws. So this is a 12 tooth sprocket. It had the option between 12 and 13. And I went with 12 to kind of help the gear ratio. Um, so this was a good part to get, uh, well, necessary part to get. Um, and I think it was about like 35 bucks, so not too bad. The only concern is um, if the go-kart for whatever reason is really slow off the line, like is really bad at accelerating, I'm gonna have to go with the torque converter because the clutches don't really help at all with acceleration. They kind of just eliminate the fact so the go-kart doesn't you know spin away as you start it because um, the torque converters really help with acceleration so since I had to decrease the sprocket size to 64 I don't know how um, much that's going to affect the acceleration I'll have more top end speed for sure but the way the gear ratio is now I don't know how the acceleration is going to be so that's really just going to come when the go-kart is all finished and I start driving it for the first time all right so the next parts or part if you will are the seat struts and these will be mounted to the frame and to the seat to hold the seat onto the go-kart. Um, I got two of the same ones, I think these are about 11 inches long. Uh, they're really nice, they're you know chrome plated and um, this one's nine and a half and it's bent a little bit and basically since this is a custom go-kart there's no struts or brackets that are going to mount perfectly um, to how I want it. So basically what I'm going to have to do is 
I'm gonna have to heat this up, which may ruin the chrome plating, but whatever, because I actually kind of want to paint these black anyways. Um, and I'm gonna have to bend these and bend the middle part to fit um, how I need it to fit to, you know, uh, mount the seat properly. And this one, so these are gonna go on the sides of the seat, and this one will go on the back. And then I'll go over this more in detail when I actually get onto the video where I'm um, working on mounting the seat. Uh, but yeah, these were some crucial parts that I needed in order to move on to mounting the seats. So um, it was really good that I got these. I think these were like, the big ones were like 13 each and this was like, uh, I don't know, these were like 16 each and this was like 12 maybe. Um, so yeah, something like that. Alrighty, so the next part that I got is the steering wheel hub. And this little tiny thing, it's made out of aluminum and it's kind of, it has a black finish to it. Um, this is an angled steering wheel hub, so if you can see, instead of being um, perpendicular actually to the shaft, it's a little bit this way to kind of make the steering wheel more, instead of this, it's like that when you're driving. Um, so this was a cool little piece that I got. Um, it's going to work really well with the three quarter inch steering um, shaft that I need, and nice quality. The only thing I have yet to get are the bolts to mount this. and. I will show the other part that works with this that I got uh, in a second. And then the la uh, one of the other things, it's just the chain. Um, this is, I think it's two or three feet of chain, uh, 35 pitch chain. And um, so it needed to get it at some point. So like the website that I use, which is Comic Card Sales, if you buy over, I think it's $200 worth of items, you get free shipping. So I was just trying to bundle stuff and kind of, you know, foresee what I would need in the future so I can get that free shipping. Um, and I think that is all of it except this one last item. So I'm going to grab that and I'm saving the best for last because this is by far the coolest item I think. So this is the coolest item and also the most expensive item and it's the steering wheel. So this steering wheel is um, a really professional uh, looking wheel. It, I'm pretty sure it's what they use on all the uh, actual shifter carts and stuff. Um, it was a hundred dollars and I could have gone with the cheaper steering wheel but I really wanted the nice one to kind of give it that shifter cart look um, so it's got the flat bottom for you know the flat bottom top for racing and stuff like that and it's got the same pattern that I made sure matched up with the steering wheel hub um, it's made out of really lightweight aluminum so it's really light um, and then the outer part here is all wrapped in Alcantara leather which is a nice touch and um, it really makes it feel high quality and it smells really good too. It smells like a new car with fresh leather seats. Um, but the only thing that I'm probably going to have to do since this is Alcantara is I'm going to have to wear gloves when I'm driving the go-kart because for those that don't know Alcantara is very susceptible to breaking down from the acids and oils that we naturally have on our hands. Um, so in order to preserve this steering wheel, this very expensive steering wheel, I'm probably just gonna wear gloves whenever I drive the go-kart. So, very cool piece. Um, it's just a really expensive steering wheel, but you know, it's worth it. And for right now, since I don't have the steering column, it's just kind of like a Frisbee, but no, I'm just kidding. I would not throw this around for $100. Um, but yeah, those are all the parts I got, and I think I'm gonna start kind of getting an idea of where the seat wants to go, where the seat should go, and um, maybe I might start mounting it, maybe not. So I'm gonna start working on mounting the seat. So before I actually just do some drilling, I kinda have to explain to you guys what I'm gonna be doing so it makes sense. Um, so basically, what I want to do, and this is kinda, I talked to my coworker about this, who's kind of a really handy guy and he's good with like shop tools and stuff, and um, what he, my problem was, was figuring out how to drill a straight hole through this pipe, through the tubing to like get a, you know, good straight hole for the bolt to go through to mount the seat, because I don't want to, you know, crooked like that. So what he suggested was, um, you know, figuring out where you want to drill your hole, because this is just the square tubing, so it's hollow. And what he said was, you know, um, drill the hole only on one side. And then what I needed to do was, this is a metal punch, and it just, it's like a piece of metal, and on this end it has a little um, spike tip, so that kind of like when you hit this end with the hammer, it kind of leaves an indentation in the metal, and that, what that does is it allows a, like kind of a resting place for the drill bit to sit in when you start drilling the hole, so it doesn't like walk around 
as you're drilling it. So what he suggested to do was drill through one side, um, which is the same, this uh, um, punch is the same size as the drill uh, bit size that I'm gonna be using and the same bolt size. And so once I drill through one side, I'm gonna, I have this uh, block of wood and I have to use the drill press to drill a straight hole through this. Um, but then once I drill a straight hole, hole through this, I'm just gonna allow the punch to slide right through, through the first hole, and then that will sit um, straight since this is gonna be a straight, straight, because uh, I can put this in the drill press. So this hole that's drilled through here is straight. And so then I know that this punch will be sitting straight. And then I just hit this and then it should leave a good spot for the drill to, to drill through on the other side, which should give a straight hole. And, um, you know, it, it's a pretty, pretty uh, good idea. I, I don't see what could go wrong, but, you know, I just gotta make sure that this is drilled properly and that I, um, you know, measure twice, cut once, or drill once in this case. And, um, because I just want to make sure that everything lines up. But before I actually start drilling, I'm going to pull out the engine and kind of just, I don't have a place to mount it yet, but I'm going to put it on the back there and kind of just make sure that where I want the seat is, it has clearance for the engine. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. All right, so I pulled the engine out of the box. It's going to be mounted this way because the shaft is on this side. So I'm just going to kind of pick it up here and get an idea of the clearance that I need. And at the moment, looks like I should be okay, because it's gonna be mounted just about here. So that's good, because it doesn't look like the gas tank comes any farther forward than this um, tubing right here, which is what I was looking for. And I wasn't gonna mount the seat right up against the, the uh, back here I was going to kind of put it forward because based on where my feet sit um, I don't want them to be too far back but I also don't want them to be hanging off the edge so I think we're good there so that's good um, that this will fit uh, nicely and I won't have to worry about the seat hitting the engine so I'm going to go ahead and move on to working on getting the piece ready to start drilling the holes for the for the seat to mount to Okay, so I got the block all set up on the drill press with some um, pieces of metal spacing it out to kind of get it center. It doesn't have to be perfectly center, but you know, just kind of would like it to be center if it could. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and drill right through it. Hopefully I don't have any problems and then we will be good to go. Alrighty, so I drilled through the block, it goes all the way through, and the punch fits through just snug enough to go all the way through, but not loose enough to where it'll wiggle around and give a non-straight guide. Um, so what I was doing now was taking the seat and just kind of placing it here, because the, the first two bolts that I'm going to be drilling for are going to be ones that mount the bottom of the seat to the cart and that's where I'm going to start because then it'll make it easier because the seat will be held down so I can then measure and mount for the other holes. So what I was doing here was just kind of playing around to see where because there's an optimal there's a flat spot on the bottom of the seat which is where I want to drill the holes and have the seat sit like because it'll give enough pitch back to kind of you know not feel like you're falling forward out of the seat but not leaning back far enough and as when you as when I had brought the engine out the tank is just about flush with this piece so I don't want the back of the seat when it's tilted back to go way over the back so um, I was just kind of measuring that out I sat in the seat and kind of got a feel for where my feet were which is just a little bit past the front shocks and uh, that's ideal distance because I don't want my feet hanging over the edge but I don't want them too far back either because um, that'll be a good spot because when I mount, get ready to build the pedal assembly, I'm going to buy a plate, a metal plate, and then weld the plate to the front there so um, your feet aren't like falling through the open parts of the frame. That'll make it nice and easy for your feet to sit on. But uh, anyways, um, so what I did was I just kind of took a Sharpie and kind of guessed at where 
um, that flat spot was. And of course, you know, the seat can be moved. And that really depends on when I drill through the seat, which is kind of nerve-wracking because um, I have no nothing to go off of um, for that. Um, so I kind of just marked a little red mark here, and I'm going to try and find center point and then mark another point on the other side. And then I will get to drilling here shortly. Okay, so as you can see in this shot here, I got the uh, spot to measure it up, and then I just took the punch and punched the two little spots. Uh, I messed up on this side, it was a little bit farther back, um, it was too far forward, so I had to punch twice, um, but in reality, it's such a small difference, it's really not going to make a huge um, difference in the final product, because I'm going to drill the hole, and it's going to be bigger than this anyways. So, measured that up, drilled that, or I uh, punched that, and then what I'm going to do next is get the drill, drill through one side, and then use my little wooden block that I made to line up for the other side. Okay, so we got the drill, and we're going to go ahead and drill through this side. Almost ate it, but we're good. I forgot how dull these bits were, so it um, takes a while to drill through even such thin metal, but we made it through. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then I'll catch up with you guys. Alrighty, so I drilled through both sides and as you can probably see on camera here, the right hole is a little bit off center to the right, but that won't make a huge difference. Um, just as long as I drill straight and line it up with the seat. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the block and then punch through um, the other side so I can get a good starting point for the other end of the tubing. Alright everyone, so I had to take a little break, I went and got some dinner and did a few other things, um, but basically uh, what I did after, so you guys just finished watching me uh, pound out the other end and then I drilled through those and drilled all the way through and thankfully, because um, I ran the bolt through and it looks like the bolt is pretty uh, straight so it looked like that, that that idea and that method to drill straight through worked um, pretty well. So, what I did after that, before I took a little break, was I, so I, this is the bottom of the seat, and basically what I did was, um, because since I'm going to be mounting the bottom first, and this is kind of the, like a very crucial step in mounting the seat, since the seat, you know, one has to be straight, and two has to be um, the correct forward-backward position, and not like sideways. So what I did to try and get an idea of where to drill these holes was I put tape on the bottom here, and then I laid the seat down like it would be mounted. And then what I did was I took the punch and I came up from the bottom and tapped the seat as hard as I could. And uh, luckily the it kind of worked, so the punch left an indentation in the tape. So that kind of gave me an idea of where to uh, drill these two holes to kind of um, to make sure I do it right the first time. And what I'm going to be doing is, since this seat is fiberglass, I don't want to drill too big of a hole uh, 
well one I want to drill a small hole first to make sure that I'm getting the right spot because if I mess up and it's a small hole it's not as big of a deal if it was a big hole and two since it's fiberglass I don't want to take the chance of trying to drill a big hole right off the bat and maybe cracking the fiberglass um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of um, indent these uh, little spots a little bit more and then I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the drill bit and make a small hole through here and hopefully it lines up well all right so we got the small drill bit um, put on the drill I'm gonna go ahead and drill the first hole and uh, hopefully it goes well trying to be precise as possible Well, that's sure a heck of a lot easier than drilling through metal, that's for sure. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can... These are pretty small holes. One's there. Can't even see the other one. Well, I guess I'll take a very thin, um, maybe like a thin drill bit, and just see if if it lines up. Alrighty. So what I did was I'm trying to get this in camera. I think you guys can see those two little drill bits sticking out. What I'm trying to do is just get an idea if these holes actually are uh, lined up to fit the um, two holes that I drilled into the frame so just trying to slowly lower it down here and see how close I think that's pretty good so what I think I'm going to do now is up the drill bit size and then wow my face is really blown up because of this light I think what I'm going to do now is up the drill bit size and um, just maybe dr drill it big enough so I can actually see the holes through here because right now they're like pin sized holes so I think I'm going to do that next. Alright everyone, so after a few more uh, step up on drill bit sizes and drilling through and a little bit of wiggling and jiggling um, with the seat here, I finally got it mounted now the way it's sitting right now it's a little bit leaning back but I'm gonna fix that with some I picked up some grommets from Home Depot while I was out but um, essentially it's gonna be like that and not like that that's a little too far back so I'm thinking a little bit like that and that'll um, fix itself when I put some grommets and uh, also tighten the bolts down because right now the bolts um, uh, yeah you can see the bolts move when I um, move the seat back and forth but that was a huge step and frankly a very nerve-wracking one because I was not sure if <laughs> this was gonna if they were gonna line up and I was really hoping that I wasn't gonna have to start over again and luckily I nailed the spacing too because I wanted to get it right on that flat spot and that kind of it's perfect spacing. So what I'm going to do, um, I'll finish up this video, but after I wrap up the video, just to fill you guys in with what I'm going to do, um, basically I'm just going to take the bolts out. I bought four grommets um, to go in between the, uh, the um, seat in the frame, so it's not the fiberglass sitting right on the metal. It's going to have a little bit of a rubber um, well, essentially almost like a bushing in between but it's more of a it's actually a grommet um, and then in the next video I'll be mounting the bracket that goes from here to there on the other side and also the one there's gonna be one that mounts right in the back here um, to the bottom part of the frame and then I'm also gonna order one more bracket and it's gonna mount right here to the centerpiece so that's six points of contact for the seat and I think that is plenty good. Um, that'll that'll hold it in really well. And also, I'm gonna get some like washers and stuff to put in here. Um, but I just I don't think I have any at the house at the moment, so I have to go out to Home Depot 
and get some. I probably will put nylon washers in there. And um, for anyone that is experienced with go-karts, uh, if you have any ideas of, of how to cover up these bolts, because that's going to be mighty uncomfortable when I'm sitting in it, that would be greatly appreciated. I was thinking of maybe some like Velcro padding, kind of like you would find in helmets and stuff, but if there's a more professional solution, um, I would be greatly appreciated if you guys could input your advice. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this go-kart build video. I hope you all enjoyed the content. Um, I'm just really happy to get that seat mounted because I was very nervous about doing that. Okay everyone, so I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. I'm just going to button up a few more things like I said. Um, but it's really hot in here. This light back here is super hot. It generates a lot of heat. So I'm like sweating bullets right now, especially when I was working on the cart. And not to mention, since I just drove my car, um, it heats up the garage like crazy. So it's, uh, it's pretty hot in here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up, get the garage cleaned up, and then uh, call it quits for the night. and Or maybe edit this video so I can post it up for you guys because I know a lot have been asking for the uh, go-kart build video 16. And one last thing before I go, um, a lot of people have been asking about me releasing the plans for this go-kart. Um, on uh, People have been messaging me on Facebook and stuff like that. And um, I would, as much as I would love for you guys to build this go-kart, there's really two reasons that um, I'm not going to release the plans. One, uh, a safety and legality issue. Um, not pointing out anyone in particular, but just in general. If someone were to build this go-kart and it, you know, not necessarily build it in the right way, drive it and then crash it and get hurt, I don't know where I stand on, you know, if I could get in trouble for that. And two, I really built this go-kart because I really want it to be like the only one like it in the world. So, uh, just kind of like a unique thing. And that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do a go-kart from scratch versus built, buying a second-hand frame and stuff like that. So, I'm sorry for those that asked for the plans, um, but I am more than happy to help you guys out with ideas and kind of how to get started and tell you how I got my ideas and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, if you guys have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good day and I will see you all in the next video.